everything that we look at, draw your sine curve. That's not a picture of an octopus's head. So again, this is a sine curve. Where are you in the rate of change in growth? Is it bottoming and accelerating? Is it peaking and rolling, then slowing, and then is it slowing to its fastest point? For non-farm payrolls, <coughs> this peaked in really the first quarter of 2015. That was the peak, 2.3% non-farm payroll growth. Josephine, go back to that slide quickly just so people know what data set goes with this, okay? Like this is emblazoned in my bloody head because this is what my job, okay? That black line, see that black line there where we circle the red dot? Come back to me now, come back to me. That red dot is here. That's that point in the cycle, okay? We're currently tracking like down to whatever it is, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9%, okay? What I'm saying is that in the next three months, the probability of falling to sub 1% growth and then zero is, is rising. So if you look at the comparisons, uh, you have to, I'll just, I'll just show you, because again, this is, God forbid you actually use real data. The comparisons, the period of reporting, this, this period in here, uh, 2015. September of 2015 was 143,000, okay? That's plus jobs, okay? October was 295. November was 280, okay? These comps are the best forward predictor I can find for a faster slowdown in the pace of jobs growth. I'll say that slowly again. These comparisons, what happened last year up here, are now your catalyst for what becomes reality there. There is no Jason Furman. There is no Ben Bernanke. There is nobody who is smarter than me, allegedly, that can refute that. I would love to have them here. The reality is that these people will stay very, very, and hugely far away from me because there's no way to really refute economic gravity unless, of course, you're that guy Furman who actually says that he doesn't really believe in the concept Furman. You know, he's like the, the chairman of something of something, of a council of advisors of something within something Obama. Uh, so his guy, Harvard guy, you know, his dad, you know, big, big time money guy, real estate guy in New York City, goes to Harvard, wanders on back, gets a job in government. And this guy, he, he doesn't believe in the concept of late cycle. He doesn't believe in this conceptually. <laughs> Con that's it's an outrageous Conceptually. Problem. Like how, it is outrageous. Yeah. Like that's like me literally waking up in the morning, going up to my old boss, uh, this guy's boss is Obama, and saying, you know what? Conceptually, I just don't agree with the sun rising in the east. I, I've written extensively on this. I just conceptually don't believe it. <laughs> I believe that today would be a different day if we think of it otherwise. I mean, these people, <laughs> like these people are really dangerous. It's pretty funny. It's, it's really sad and it's scary. Uh, these guys who are sitting there in their weenie bins that get these jobs, they're the ones p pushing. You know, don't forget that this is the guy who advised Obama to tell you when the economy was here that, 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 that it was peddling fiction that the economy wasn't falling down in here. <laughs> I mean, it's so bad. I mean, That's I, pretty good. Uh, so get rid of four. Get, I mean, if the polls stay where they are, it, it looks like you can get, red, get ready for four more years of that. Yeah. Ad Economic Advisory Council Sounds does official. not believe in cycles. Sounds official. Now, from a process perspective, and again, I, I, I've, uh, I have to say thank you to all of you that have you've gotten so many new people to sign up. So I have to keep, um, I have to keep repeating myself. But I do think repetition is good. It's like any good athlete or any good disciplinary kind of you know, exercise in life. You got to rinse and repeat. Um, but again, when you think about kind of where this cycle is from a GDP perspective, okay, the cycle we just showed you, actually show the slide one more time, Josephine, it peaked, this is US GDP, peaked in the you know, second half of 2015 at 3 to 3.3%. See that? There it is, not making up the numbers like other people do. <laughs> and then you slow to 1.2% year over year. And by the first quarter, you're gonna be at zero dot something percent year over year. 
Unless that changes, there's this thing called bond yields that trades in a trending channel like this. Just take this, superimpose it on that rate of change from the cycle peak, and you'll see that bond yields, having started the year at 2.27%, have basically done this. And you're currently here. And freaking out. Freak out. You freak out every single time. One, two, three, four. Actually, this is, there's, there's actually seven Six. times that this has happened. If you listen to my, to my, to my buddy Gartz, <laughs> one would get smaller here. <laughs> what is one would get thing? larger here. That's a and one would get quite, 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 quite small, smaller and smaller here. <laughs> no. Aye, there's the rub. That's where you have a commodities guy who can't run money not understanding the intermediate to long-term trend from here to here. This is what bond yield, yes, there's an interesting question. At 1.3, 1.4, like when Darius said, I took my asset allocation to fixed income down to 6%. Yeah, that's tiny. They've been tracking around. That, was, that was when bond yields hit the low the first time. We understand how to risk manage the immediate term trade within the trend, but God knows that unless you can tell me how we're not gonna go from 1.2 to 0% something GDP, am I gonna get off the long bond train? At least I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now I could be completely wrong, like a lot of people have been this whole way down in bond yields. But I don't expect to be. There wouldn't be any, literally, any reason for me to change my mind at this juncture. Zero.